This is it, ladies and gentlemen. Whew. The next Narratives Podcast episode is out right now. Right now. You're listening to The Narratives FM on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play. Or you're watching The Narratives on YouTube. Live. We're doing the plugs at the first bit. In That's the flesh. good. What well, are we doing well. today? We're night. We're night. <laughs> We're night. Tonight, <laughs> we are talking about John Whiteside Parsons. A.K.A. Jack Parsons, as he's better known. Yeah, he's better known as Jack Parsons to nobody. To so. everyone. He was to a, everybody? No. no. I don't know. Mm, he was no. an American rocket engineer and a rocket propulsion researcher, chemist, inventor, businessman, and thelemite occultist. Thelemite. Which, yeah, I, like I said, it was... It sounds like thermite to me. A thermite occult. Which is just like explosions. <laughs> Sorry, I just got a load of your Lego there. <laughs> Move it a little bit, yeah. True art comes that's, that's in great. several forms. Sorry, hey. listeners, you don't get to see the privilege. Parsons was associated with the California Institute of Technology and one was, was one of the principal founders of both the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the JPL... Laboratory. Laboratory. <laughs> yeah. In the Aerojet Engineering Corporation, he invented the first castable composite solid rocket propellant and Whoa. pioneered the advancement of both liquid fuel and solid fuel rockets. So that's pretty impressive. You gotta be... He's literally a rocket scientist. Literally. So. But despite his eventual success, he didn't have the best upbringing. Womp, 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 womp. He didn't. Do, 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 do. Anyway, <laughs> we're gonna talk about his not-so-good upbringing right now. May as well get into it. Blast along like a rocket. Hey! hey. I'll be I the first one to make a rocket man, man joke. No, 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 no. A turtle. No. Turtle. Get good. Yay! Turtle. You know you wanted that turtle move. Yeah. Listeners. You All saw right. that turtle. <laughs> yeah, Listeners. You know you will really. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so his parents' marriage broke down soon after Jack birthed. Was. Mm. He, <laughs> after he birthed. He would be birthed. After and, his uh, birth. Ruth, his mother, discovered that his father was actively visiting a prostitute. I tried to type Yikes. it gently. Mm. The original was like, he was an adulterer who was frequently visiting this one prostitute. And I just shortened it to, he was hanging out with prostitutes. He was having a fun time, I guess. He was. And uh, then she filed for a divorce, as one normally probably would. Yes. Normally probably would file that. Um, in March 1915, cancel. cancel that. Can't have you doing the. <laughs> Can't have you. <laughs> wasn't a pleasure having you. It was not. Uh, yeah. So Parsons' father returned to Massachusetts. After to another course. Massachusetts guy. And uh, after being publicly exposed, oh no, for his <laughs> stint. <laughs> stint with yeah. the prostitute. Oh. Yeah, you did it for the plot. Yeah, I see. You had and a stint. Ruth forbid him. From seeing Jack. Yeah, so, it was really sad. That's a no-go. Is it sad, though? I mean, he was... He was still a dad. His dick was wet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, and not with the mom. I move quick. So, that's what I'm saying. Is it bad? It's bad. Quick, let's yeah. talk about this. I don't... Do you think so? I think so. If your dad was, like, hanging around with another woman, I, and your I mom would, was I'd like... I'd be like, nah. I never want to see you again. I'd be like, call me in two months. You know? Okay. Like, see if you can clean up your act kind of thing? Yeah. All right, fair enough. I would just be, like, banished <laughs> to the outer realm. 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 And, realm. and uh, he was publicly exposed, as we said. Ruth's parents, Walter and Carrie Whiteside, Whiteside. moved to California with the, to be with Jack. And, and, Jack's, and not Jack's daughter, and his sister. To be with Sorry. Jack and their daughter, which is Jack's and mom. They're, they're, wait, what? Sorry. His. Sorry, Jack's mom, not Jack's sister. Not Jack doesn't have a sister. <laughs> not the same. Very Mom's separate. sister. <laughs> Only in Massachusetts. And apparently they used their wealth to buy a house in the Pasadena, which is the millionaire's mile. Oh, no. Woo-hoo. Yeah, there they lived together. Fun times. And uh, Jack was surrounded by domestic servants for the rest of his childhood. Which yeah. Which sounds... It's it sounds a good way bad. to put slaves. It's not... What, well, domestic yeah. servants? Like, it's like, on. you know how you like have... I don't want to be racist, but I'm going to be very racist. Hey, you have, like, the Mexican lady who cleans up your house? That was most of his childhood. And that is fact. He was surrounded by mostly Mexican workers, so... I guess they were sort of not slaves. They got paid. <laughs> One shekel a second. <laughs> oh, that's that's good. A really good. That's a good deal. What? I want that job, actually. <laughs> One shekel? What is the exchange One rate? One shekel a second? I, I imagine a shekel is, like, two pennies. Ooh. Right? 
So having few friends, he lived a very solitary childhood and spent much of his time reading and enjoyed works of mythology, Arthurian Whoa. legend, and the Arabian Nights. Like the turtle. Yes. The I think the turtle's in Arabian Nights. I don't know. He's also... I've always heard about it, but... Shame. Am I guessing it's about Arabia? No. And nighttime? <laughs> <laughs> Arabian mid-mornings. <laughs> he also became interested in science fiction and a keen reader of magazines like Amazing Stories. He sure was interested. Which led to his interest in rocket science. Yeah. When he was 12, he began attending Washington Junior High School, where he had very poor grades throughout his entire high school career. Thank God. Most people... Basically, they were like, he had poor grades. And then Jack was like, I'm dyslexic. And they were like, no, you're just dumb. He was like, but I know I is. So it was very hard for them. Where'd Reed go? Basically. (laughs) That wasn't bad enough. He was bullied for his upper class status and his feminine mannerisms. Man, I'd beat him up for that. Like Walking around with his (laughs) fucking sandwich. Oh yeah, well we're breeding, we're we're breeding lobsters to eat, okay? Over we're here, breeding we're breeding lobsters. <laughs> There's nowhere to go but hell. We're breeding lobsters. Make out, kiss, kiss, kiss the lobsters. <laughs> Lobster fan fiction next episode. <laughs> yeah. yeah, come on, man. He's a rich dude. He was his feminine aura was most likely a product of his rich upbringing, you know, because rich people aura? are like, I don't like dirt. Oh, my family never had to touch dirt, you know. That's sure. my that's my own guess. That's what you feel. That's how I feel. Is that how you feel right now, Eric? Feminine. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yes. Dirt feminine. <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah. So despite all that, however, he remained. Uh, he formed. He remained. He formed. He, remains. He, he formed. <laughs> remains. Here we go. <laughs> Interesting stuff. No, he formed a strong friendship with Edward Foreman, a boy who defended him from bullies. So. That was good, I guess, and and uh, shared his interest in science. How could that be bad? Science fiction and rocketry. I don't know. Like I maybe he deserved it. it. Maybe he was the bully and he was getting bullied, and it was just like know. a turn of tail, you know. It didn't seem like it, but probably not. That's just what I'm saying. Could be bad in that way. In 1928, the pair began engaging, which sounds very fun, in the homemade gunpowder-based experiments. <laughs> <laughs> well, they first used fireworks. Uh, mm-hmm. Such as cherry bombs, which are the fun little things. Are they spinning? Mm. Yeah, and they're rockets. And Parsons was suggesting that you could glue rocket instead of... <laughs> Why use lot word when few word work, Eric? I know. <laughs> glue rocket. They go, I don't know what the glue is for, honestly. To, glue, to increase the rocket fuel stability. Wow. I wrote it down. <laughs> Sorry, I got lost. I was like, meh. I don't know what the glue is. The eventually... Um, learned to use aluminum foil to make the gunpowder easier to cast. Hmm. Um, so that way that they could get it into many plays at once, and it was easier that way. Yeah, of course. To cast it, obviously, rocket um, science basic. Good so number, you got to know how to cast your you your rockets. If you put them in the wrong play, it's going to be bad. Whoops! In the microwave again. <laughs> aluminum foil microwave experiment. <laughs> Fun twist at the end. Microwave tin foil challenge. <laughs> Just put challenge at the end of anything. Oh uh, yeah, it's fun. So, uh, yeah, they they resulted in better performing rockets by putting some tinfoil on there, which is fun. Cheap little alternative. Uh, Parsons had also began to investigate the occult. Oh, no. And Whoops. performed a ritual intended to invoke the devil. Um, I don't know. Rock and roll? What is, he was listening to rock and roll? Is that what it was? No, I was just like, he intended to invoke the devil, rock and roll. In oh, like, rock and roll! I thought you were, rock and roll! See, when I initially read this, I was like... So he was listening to rock and roll in his bedroom? No, I mean, like, that's a rock and roll childhood activity, man. Okay, all right. And then, yeah. Yeah. And then, and then the ritual was over, and he apparently, he, he had this fear that it had worked. He had a giant they, fear. He freaked out for, like, a month, and his parents were like, the devil is not coming. And he's like, the end has come. I have <laughs> Guys, summoned him. this is not the end. <laughs> that was their parents. And he yeah. was like, no, nope, end time coming. Ah, uh, right. Then, uh, he, for, for some time after that, he had some troubles with the fear and uh, continually received poor school results. Parsons' mother then sent him away to study at Brown's Military Academy. For boys. Yeah, not for girls. And he was expelled there for blowing up toilets. With his cherry bombs. Whoops. Don't know why he did that. Just because. Yeah, I couldn't imagine ever being blowy up. After his uh, toilet stint. Uh, my, my, uh, my brother got in trouble for putting a stink bomb in a toilet once. How would you even funny. know? Huh? How would you even know it's a stink bomb and oh, not just I know? a toilet? I don't know. He, like put it in the toilet and then they flushed it and it like blew up. 
Oh. After it had been flushed. So it was, like really, it was just like not a not a fun <laughs> phrase. Literal bomb. Yeah, that like stinks. it was it was literally okay. a bomb. And uh yeah, there was another time. This is just a fun side story about shitty things to do with kids. Um on the high school er, in, in high school, the bus to high school, um, it was in the middle of winter and all the the windows in the bus were frozen. And one of his friends pulled out a stink bomb. <laughs> Polio like, bomb. Check this out. <laughs> Yo, and they bitch, went, you gotta try this. this. Yeah, basically. And he tossed it to my brother, and my brother was like, ah! And then, like, threw it back. I'd imagine my brother was probably like, yo, what the heck, man? I imagine he didn't go, ah! Yeah, probably not. That's what I would do. And he, so he anyway, tossed it back. Anyway, they're, they're throwing it around. The stink bomb went off in a bus, and there was no way they could open the windows. Because they were frozen shut. After this, Parsons began to... No, that's not important. <laughs> Side stories are what makes these stories. Side story complot yeah there we go so after this that was it parsons began studying at the privately run university school there he got so, excellent so grades dumb. university school like what yeah. is that I, what do we name the university school uh, yeah. yeah like what is that we did it and he won an award there for literary excellence good for that despite this his family's financial situation was plopperin and Parsons had to begin <laughs> working during the weekends and school holidays at the offices of Hercules Powder Company. Yeah. Where he learned more about explosives and their uses in rocket p- propulsion. I had a mental breakdown. That's pro- this is shaking so much, I'm worried. It's going to shake its He's body He's nervous. Off. Yeah. I need like tape or something. He continued to explore the subject in his spare time, building and testing different rockets, sometimes with materials that Parsons had stolen from work. Parsons soon constructed his first solid fuel rocket engine. That's cool, man. That's fucking awesome. Solid fuel rocket engine. That's I mean, badass. that's basically what they're. It's like all, what all rockets are nowadays. Solid well, fuel. by that time they were all like, oh, "Good." You think I can do like an interlude pipe thing in the middle? I don't know. I just keep <laughs> the middle of like, this. This has been here for a while, right? Two episodes. That's one while. You learn, then come back. Next episode, we'll have pipe flute performance by Brendan. Too late. Thank you. You're welcome. That's put to good use now. Bye. We'll use that next time. There you go. Hey, soon enough, in hopes of gaining entry back to Caltech, you skipped it. Oh, no. Parsons graduated from university school. Sorry. Parsons graduated. Spoiler alert. He he got... (laughs) Spoiler spoiler alert. He graduated. (laughs) Spoiler alert. He he went to Caltech. Um, Parsons graduated from university school in 1933. And then moved in with his mother and grandmother into the house in St. John's Avenue, where he continued to pursue his interest in literature. Ah, oh, yes, quite, yes. Yes. Then he enrolled in the Pasadena Junior College. Yep. Where he wanted to learn, earn, sorry, earn an associate degree in physics and chemistry. But he dropped out after only a term because of his financial situation. Great Depression. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh... Yes. So he, he took up a permanent position at the Hercules Powder Company, which sounds awesome. It does. It's I don't really know. I company. never looked into them too yeah. much, but... And they sent him to work at a, their manufacturing plant in Hercules? Hercules, California. <laughs> oh, that was like the man. Inside of Hercules. Yeah. They're like, here you go. There you go. So, and he, were, he earned a relatively high wage of $100 a month, making <laughs> boom sticks. I make that in like two shifts, but all right. But he was plagued by headaches. Because nitroglycerin, it does. who would have known? I would have known. <laughs> really? <laughs> he saved, he saved money. money with the hopes of going back to school, but he couldn't get the money together. No, he couldn't. He couldn't get it together. Returned to Pensadena. Pasadena. Pensa- pants, pants my d- den. <laughs> Pet ah? cemetery. Pants. <laughs> Soon enough, in hopes of gaining entry to Caltech in California, Parsons and Foreman, his friend we discussed earlier. In Foreman? Oh, foreman. <laughs> informant. Parsons, Parsons in, informant, informant attended a lecture <laughs> discussing the Austrian rocket engineer Eugene Sangrand. Some other technologies involving above stratosphere yeah, and yeah, hypothetical so, designs by William Belay of the Institute. So that that was um sorry, I wrote that in really awkwardly. Yes, you but did. basically the um what he was talking about in the lecture was just some instruments that he thought could like go above the uh, the stratosphere, which at the time they didn't think was possible because of like space. The never frontier. Mm-mm. So, yeah, he, there, there was a lecture. Basically, the guy was like, "We could build rockets to zoom around, up, up," and that was the lecture. So, <laughs> we could go up 
<laughs> and then come back, maybe. Yeah. Thank and you so, for listening. So they're really interested in that. I like right. how all of our scientist characters have been like, up, go, <laughs> down, no. Yeah. It's great. I lost my place out of sheer joy. It's Involving some strange figure out goes yep. under Lemelina suit. Parsons and Foreman approached him with interest, but he directed them to another student, Frank Melania. Wow. You can tell how successful this was because Frank has his own Wikipedia page and William doesn't. Yeah. Which is kind of funny because as I, I, I was going through it, I was like, hmm, Frank Melania, like this form, the uh, Eugene Sanderson or whatever. Yeah. Um, Sanger. No, no. Um, yeah, William Belay. I was like, William Belay, huh, interesting. There's like no information on him. And then it's like, William Belay directed them to this other dude. And then it's like, Frank Bellana has like 40 pages on Wikipedia about being a rocket engineer. And after that, it was like, oh, awesome. whoops. So this guy was like, we could go up, up. And then he's like, uh, Jack and Pars- or Parsons and, and uh, Foreman went to them. And they were like, we want to go up. And he's like, go up with them. <laughs> and then and then they, they form a group and they go up. Wow. I can't wait to see up to. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Frank Foreman and Parsons went on to apply for funding from Caltech, and although they were initially turned down, it was Frank's PhD professor who allowed them to work under him in the rocket laboratory. Laboratory. They named themselves the Gasset Rocket Research Group. Which I think was interesting. This didn't last long, however, as Frank's professor soon found himself running out of funds with the Great Depression and all. And all. <laughs> the umbrella term and all. What was help again? I can't remember what the help was. Was it this? That no, that's that's like grandpa. Grandpa. Yeah. Grandpa. <laughs> grandpa. All right, just keep it going. I was I was gonna say help. I accidentally great depression again, but you just did. I did. So this this led him to becoming a magician, apparently. Yep. Straight out. This is there's no segue there. Um, Why would there be? Uh, so he was a real magician. There's no party tricks involved. It wasn't like some guy being like, look at this turtle. It's gone. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's gone. <laughs> it's up. So he, um, he was an occult following, uh, Th- Th- Thelmanite. Thelmanite. Th- Thelmanite. So he treated magic and rocketry as different sides of the same coin, which is interesting. Both had been disparaged. Both desired, or derided. To rate, I wrote that horribly. Yeah, both both, both were, were determined impossible. Yeah, both determined impossible. But because of this, both presented themselves as challenges to be conquered. So it was basically like, I want to conquer both. Sounds interesting. It is. Uh, Rocker Tree postulated that we should no longer see ourselves as creatures chained to the earth, but as beings capable of exploring the universe, like some Guardians of the Galaxy shit right there. Similarly, magic suggested that we were unseen metaphysical worlds that existed. It could be explored with the right knowledge. So Absolutely. that's some Doctor Strange shit right there. That's oh, Infinity magic. War, Jack Parsons confirmed. <laughs> Side of plot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so both rocketry and magic were rebellious against the very limits of human existence. In striving for one challenge, he could not help but strive for the other. This guy really wanted to learn magic rocket and this is actually yeah there's magic missile <laughs> as far as most magic goes there's right hand path left hand path and chaos magic oh yeah he was basically thelemite is kind of mostly left hand magic if you know what i'm talking about whatever which means that you're not good with left the hand is like very 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 strict rule oh, yeah. right hand is like yeah we're just kind of fucking and there's a rule book over there i guess and chaos is like i don't even know what rules is <laughs> <laughs> which is the most fun Huh. Anyway, that's Eric's magic lesson. Parsons <laughs> adhered to the occult <laughs> philosophy. Eric's magic lesson here. So you got hands and the fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Parsons adhered to the occult philosophy of Thelema, which had been founded in 1904 by the English occultist Alistair Crowley, or Crowley oh, as it's actually Crowley. pronounced. Crowley's mm-hmm. awesome. We're doing an episode on Crowley. I think that's the guy I was talking about earlier. Following like went to who did the Egypt thing and then his yeah yeah it is. that's what I was talking about. So Crowley revelation that he had in Cairo, Egypt, where, yeah. according to his accounts, a spirit being known as the Awas directed him to a prophetic text known as the, the Book of the Law. Yep. Prior to becoming aware of Thelma and Crowley, Parsons' interest in echos- esocentrism. esocentrism was developed through his reading The Golden Bough, which in 1890, is a work in mm. comparative mythology by Scottish social anthropologist James George Fraser, or Fraser. Mm. Parsons had attended lectures on Theosophy by philosopher Jiddu Krishmarati. Theosophy. Sure. Theosophy. Theosophy. (laughs) 
with his first wife, Helen. But disliked the belief system sentiment because of, quote, the good and the true. Hmm. During rocket tests, Parsons often recited Crowley's poem, Hymn to Pan, as a good luck charm. Interesting. He took to Alice. He took to addressing Crowley as "most beloved father" and signed off to him as "thy son John." Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. He, he's a wizard now. In 1945. <laughs> he's a wizard now. Parsons gave a speech to the Agape Lounge, in which he attempted to explain how he felt that the Book of Law could be made relevant to modern life. Yeah. In this speech. Uh, which was subsequently pu- 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 punished, <laughs> published under Pushed. the title of Doing Your Will. Yeah. He examined the Thalamite concept of true will, writing that the manspring of an individual is his creative will. This will is the sum of his tendencies, his destiny, his inner truth. It is one with the force that makes the birds sing <laughs> and flowers one bloom. With the force. Execute order 66. Don't do it. As inevitable as gravity, as implicit as a bowel movement, it informs alike <laughs> atoms in men and sons. I cannot. That was going all so convincingly, and then all of a sudden. It's implicit as a bowel movement. It informs alike atoms and men and sons. And bowel movements. To the man who knows this will, there is no why or why not. No can or cannot. He is! There is no known force that can turn an apple into an alley cat. There is no no known for- no no <laughs> no known force that can turn a man from his will. This is the triumph of genius that surviving the centuries enlightens this world. This force burns within every man. What a guy. Parsons and Cameron decided to travel to Mexico for a few months for some reason. Both for oh for vacation reason. There we go. You know, every once in a while, you just got to keep reading. Kids. Every once in a while, read the whole sentence. And for Parsons to take up a job opportunity, establishing an explosives factory for the Mexican government. <laughs> I wonder. I like the wizard. They interview. hoped that this would facilitate <laughs> a move to Israel, where they could start a family, and where Parsons could bypass the U.S. government to <laughs> recommence his rocketry career. Commence rocketry career. He was particularly disturbed by the presence of the FBI, convinced that they were spying on him. Oh no, you're magic. What are you going to do? <laughs> oh no. The FBI knows. June 17th, 1952, the psychic FBI. The psychic FBI. A day detected. before their planned departure, Parson received a rush order of explosives for a film set and began working on it in his home laboratory. An explosion destroyed the lower part of the building. What? During which Parson sustained mortal wounds, meaning he's alive still. Magic. However, his right forearm was amputated. His legs and left arm were broken, and a hole was torn in the right side of his face. Yikes. ears. That's what he said about Magic. it. Magic. <laughs> That's what you get. Showtime. <laughs> yeah. Despite these critical injuries, Parson was found conscious. It was a oh, little... That creeps me out. By the upstairs lodgers. Just the what fact kind of that... conscious? Do you think he was like, ah, conscious or like... I have a cheap tire beam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was magic, so he could have been like that. He could have just been like... Hmm. All These petty wounds are nothing. Magic heals the wounds by first healing the mind. The will of the will of the will of the willow. Mm-hmm. The willow smith. Yeah, will smith. Bar- will smith, smith magic. That's my form of he magic. tried to communicate with the arriving ambulance workers who rushed him to the nearest <laughs> hospital where he was declared dead around 37 minutes after the oh, explosion. Oh, okay. Then my, the, the, <laughs> the hospital workers have arrived. I thought it was like he tried to communicate with them arriving. So, like, before he even picked up, he was just sitting there just like... Hmm. <laughs> I, I guess he had a stump, so it would have been like... <laughs> More stump. <Yeah. laughs> More stump. He was trying to send the, the, the coordinates to his death. Absolutely. So, yeah, he dies around oh. seven, 37 minutes what? after the explosion. I thought you said he was alive. Where his mother, Ruth, was informed of the events, she immediately took a fatal overdose of barbiturates and died. What? So as soon as Jack died, she was like, cancel. Wow. Cameron learned of her husband's death from reporters at the scene where she returned home from grocery shopping. Interesting. Whoops! Yay. We still got more, though. What, he comes back? 
Because magic? Keep on going. All right. Past the day, the police department criminologist Don Harding led the official investigation. He concluded that Parsons had been mixing fulminate of mercury in a coffee can when he dropped it on the floor. <laughs> of course he was. Hmm. Let me see. The yeah. best part of waking yeah. up. Yeah, <laughs> causing the initial explosion. It's exploding. It's causing the initial explosion. <laughs> yeah, Woo. which worsened when it came to contact with other chemicals in the room. Foreman then considered this... Uh, what form? Oh, Foreman is right. No, no. Foreman considered this was likely and uh, figured that uh, Parsons Ooh. often had sweaty hands <laughs> and could easily have dropped the Why can. Why was it the can? I don't know. And uh, some of Parsons' colleagues rejected this explanation. No. Though, saying that he was very attentive about safety. He so was. His, his sweaty palms were nothing. All right. Just wear gloves when you're working with mercury. Yeah, two colleagues from the Burmite Powder Company described Parsons' work habits as scrumptiously neat. Mm. Mm. Scrumptiously and exceptionally cautious. In a later statement from Habits as... Wait, sorry, <laughs> when you go back and read the same line twice. The later <laughs> statement from chemical engineer George there we go. Santimers. He insisted that the explosion must have come from beneath, beneath the, the floorboards. floorboards. Because he was doing magic, implying an organized <laughs> plot to kill Parsons. Magic! <laughs> Making fun of magic hardcore. Yeah. Harding accepted this, uh, that these inconsistencies were magic, but described the manner in which Parsons had stored his chemicals as criminally negligent. Negl- negligent. And noted that Parsons had previously been investigated by the police for illegally storing chemicals in his magic purse. God damn it, Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> At the parsonage, sorry. He also he, was magic he also found a morphine filled syringe which implied magic was at the scene. Which hmm. implies suggesting, suggesting that magic was narcotized. That Parsons was narcotized. He was narcotized to experience more magic. <sighs> The police saw insufficient evidence to continue the investigation and closed the case as a magic death. Accidental death. Here's what they wrote in the newspaper about it. John W. Parsons, handsome 37-year-old rocket scientist, killed Tuesday in a not chemical so explosion. Not so anymore. He's not a very pretty boy. Was one of the founders of a weird semi-religious cult that flourished here about 10 years Is ago. Is that what said? A weird semi-religious yep. cult? In the police report. Yeah. Uh, sorry, the newspaper. Yeah. Old police reports yesterday pictured the former Caltech professor as a man who led a double existence. A down-to-earth explosives expert who dabbled in intellectual necromancy. <laughs> intellectual necromancy possibly he was trying to reconcile fundamental human urges when the inhuman buck rogers type of invasions that sprang from his test tubes that sounds very that was parsons obituary in june 19th 1952 tubes. that sounds very like what, what, what is the word like false uh, uh, uh what, what is the word when it like means something dirty but it's not innuendo yeah that's the one Sprang from his test tube. Yeah, you know what I mean? Hello, ladies. Yeah, really. Want to see my Bunsen burner? Yeah. It's Jeez. a fire hazard, baby. Yeah. Oh, no. It's. <laughs> that was his full obituary? Yep. Did he give a, pre- fu- a pre-funeral? <laughs> Did he get a pre-funeral <laughs> after party? Yeah. <laughs> At my Magic. funeral, there's going to be an after party. Yeah. Only with wizards. Yeah. So both Wolf... And Smith suggested that Parthen's Parth, death had been suicide. Okay, sweet. Thick. Stating that he had suffered from depression for some time. Because magic. <laughs> <laughs> magic. Well, actually, magic is very, like, it very much so isolates you from everyone. Even, like, other magicians are very isolated when they practice. I can't talk about this with you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> magic is very isolating. David, <laughs> David Bowie wrote about that a lot. What? He very much so struggled to learn magic, and that's most of what his songs have been. I need a doubt button right here. <laughs> My Google it. Smash that doubt button. <laughs> magic make you depresso? Who know? David Bowie. Okay, sorry, David Bowie. Didn't mean to cram on your style. He's dead, it's fine. Yeah. Others theorized that the explosion was an assassination planned by Howard Hooges. In Hughes. response, Hoogis. Hoogis. Howard Hoogis. Howard Hoogis? Howard Hoogis. Howard Hoogis. In response to Parsons' suspected theft of Hoogis Airplane Company documents. The documents! Yeah. So, um, Cameron became convinced mm. that Parsons had been murdered. 
He was utterly convinced, my friends. Absolutely convinced. Either by police officers seeking vengeance for his role in the conviction of Earl Knight, or by anti-zombies. Anti-Zionists. Z- uh, Zionists. I was reading that and I was Meaning like, what anti-Jews. the hell? Anti-Jews. Anti-zombies. <laughs> no, 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 no. No zombies. Just magic. Don't you hate it when you confuse Jews for zombies? Ah, uh, never do that. You just did, buddy. So opposed to his work for Israel, yeah. What if Cameron's friends, the artist Renate Drukes, nice. later stated her belief that Parsons had died in a rite designed to create a homunculus? Do you know what a homunculus yes, is? Yes, I do. Homunculus is basically I know when what you... it is. Yeah. yeah, you know? Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll explain it anyway, because maybe some people don't. It's basically when you get a lot of clay... It's how the Wonder Woman was made. You make something out of clay, you carve a symbol onto its forehead, and then you invoke the ritual to bring it to life. And you can easily kill it just by, like, erasing the symbol. Yes. Yeah, the whole time you have to go... It also doesn't work. Yeah. It's actually quite a cool concept. Okay. Let's see it. (laughs) Okay. Here he is. Homunculus potato chip. It's not Harry Potter. Homunculus GoPro. Oh, right. Homunculus car. I, okay. Homunculus turtle. Homunculus shut the fuck up. Homunculus and go. The immediate aftermath of the explosion attracted the interest of the U.S. media, making headlines in the Los Angeles Times. Oh, damn. These initial reports focused on Parsons' prominence in rocketry, but neglected to mention his occult interests. I wonder why. I agree. When asked for a comment, Aerojet Secretary Treasurer T.E. Behan... Bad name. Bad name, yeah. Said that Parsons liked to wander, but he was one of the top men in the field. The hell? What does that mean? Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess he was just hanging out. Yeah. Within a few days, journalists had discovered his involvement in Thelema and emphasized this in their reports. Oh, no. So they were like, a cult boy? Right. Yeah, we need to get that story out. He was doing a... I'm going to educate you about magic one day. Mm, Not today. I'll do, I'll do a whole Crowley episode. <laughs> a private prayer service was held for Parsons at the funeral home where his body was cremated. Cameron scattered his ashes at the Mojave Desert. Just a little bit of a desert. A bit of a spritz. Yes. Yeah. Before burning most of his possessions. She later tried to perform the astral projection to commune with him. Apparently it didn't work or else we would have known. It probably would have been. Or anywhere. it did work, and she doesn't want to talk about it. Don't want to talk bring about magic it. to the eye of the public. So that the was government like, oh, it's sh- way good up here in the heck zone. <laughs> it's what have you ever seen a movie Insidious? That's what they do. They astral projection. Yeah, they they're yeah. just like <laughs> yeah. to the future, <laughs> back to yeah. the astral zone. Yeah, here I go, dwarf to the future. Yeah. the O T O. Uh, Ordo Templo oh. Orientis. The O T O. So on the memorial, the auto. The, uh, <laughs> the auto also held a memorial service with attendees including Han Solo and Sarah Lee. All right. Sorry, Helen and Sarah, and which Smith led the Gnostic Mass. And thus, is that end the tale? Ends the life of Jack Parsons. Are you sure that ends the tale? That's the tale. Is there more about his rocketing? I want to know more about... How do you want to know more about rocketing and not about occult wizard? I really want to know more about rocketing. Jack Parson, rocket man. Ma'am. <laughs> rocket ma'am. Yeah. Rocket I swear there, there was more about the rocketing. Cause like, I cut some of it. He was he was pretty attractive, though, if you if you actually... If you get a look at him. I've seen him. I can see him right now. If he's you, a, if, he's if attractive. Guys, not an Give attractive. Give me some of that. He, he, ah, this is... This Alistair is Crowley. Crowley. Crowley, my... It looks like the the evil wizard that you see in any evil looks like, movie. Crowley looks like the guy in Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Or or the one guy, at, like, Grindelwald in in Fantastic Beasts. Ah. Yeah. Um, all sorts of just... Uh, but look at that guy. Yeah, but he's Grady McMarthy. Yeah. <laughs> McMurray. Huh. Yeah, there, there definitely Hold on, is go more. back down. Uh, well, there... Go back up. Oh my god. Stop. Grady McMurdy was reunited by the OTO. Oh, that's not even Parsons. Yeah, it was reunited because of Parsons. <sighs> right? Here we go. Uh-huh. So so here's some... Is, uh, he's holding the replica of a car bomb. Blah, blah, blah. Some interesting stuff. Blah, blah, blah. Car bomb. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah car bomb. It's hard to just escort that in the middle. So the trio... Let's go back to their uh, their um, their financing by the, the Great Depression thing. 
financed <laughs> by the Great Depression. <laughs> Sorry, they're Zero rocketing. Zero dollars was because because we kind of we went straight to the magic, which was kind of fun, but still. So the the trio, the three of them, as we were talking about. So there's uh, Parsons, uh, F- Foreman, and Foreman, Cameron. and and Cameron. The the trio apparently focused on their distinct skills as collaborative rocket development. So Car- Car- Parsons was the the chemist, Foreman was the mech- machinist. Sorry, and Melina the technical theoretician. Theor- theoretician, sorry, like the th- the theory guy. Theoretician. Can't, I can't say that right right now. Theoretician. So in 1968, Melina, uh, self-educated Parsons, in they lacked the discipline or self uh, self wrote that the self-educated Parsons, <laughs> sorry, lacked oh the discipline of a formal higher education, which is, but had an uninhibited and fruitful imagination, hmm. which is kind of interesting. Like right? Dr. Sam's. Yeah. And uh, the informally trained Parsons and Foreman, because they never actually got university uh, stuff, they were just kind of there building shit. Um, they were eager to try whatever had hap- uh, idea happened to spring in their mind. Okay. So they're like, cat explosive? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see it. I thought, like rocket cat? Let's go. Rocket cat. Lego re- explosive? Let's go. Like, I don't know. They were just hey. that kind of oh. guy. Which is probably oh, why they ran go. out of money really quick. Because I'd imagine, like, after a while, they're like, can you just stop blowing shit up? <laughs> can you And they're cease? like, I want to see how well this table go boom. <laughs> table ship. <laughs> just the table go up. <laughs> and then down. Yeah. Parsons met Helen Northrup at a local church dance and yeah, proposed here's, here's marriage. Yeah, really here's they got married. Wow. She accepted, and they were married in April 1935 at the Little Church of the Flowers. Oh. In but Forest not Lone. married by the occult guy? Probably no. He can wouldn't he, have done that in person. He's too. Can busy. he like fuse them together? Just like <laughs> using his holodomor. Wait, no, that's the. That thing. is the. No, that is what Stalin when he no, killed no, everyone. No, no. A lot the of my ho- family died. I, in the holodomor. Sorry. The ho- what was it? Ho- ho- holocaust. No, not the holocaust. Where are you going with this? The homunculus. <laughs> holocaust GoPro. <laughs> Oh my god. Never confuse a homunculus with a holocaust. <laughs> That's not what I The moral me. of today's episode, kids, is never confuse the holocaust for a large clay monster. Don't do demons, kids. Or you will get spooked for so long your grades suck. Yeah, that'll be a rough time. It will be a rough Think time. Think about it. Yeah, so they, they met in the... They met... The, him and his and wife. And then they got married and then yeah. they were doing it. Uh, Parsons and, and Foreman were not too pleased with the uh, austere program of... Sorry, that, that, that's... Mm-hmm. Uh, for extra money, sorry, he manufactured nitroglycerin in their home, which... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> in a coffee can. Constructing a home laboratory in the front porch. Why and, the uh, porch? Melina uh, recounted that Parsons and, and Foreman were not too pleased with the austere program that did not include the least of launching model rockets. So How basically, they, they they didn't like not being able to rocket. Whenever you see a laboratory on TV, they're always like like airtight and like very well cleaned, and they're like, "We got it out on a porch." Because these this was back <laughs> like, in the 30s and the 40s, man. But there was still some level of like, I understand these are dangerous chemicals, and he was just like mercury bath. Back then, they were painting <laughs> shit in uranium goop back then. <laughs> like I'm do. not even. <laughs> they're just like watches. Yeah. Make them glow in the dark with uranium goop. We get all the ladies to do it. And then the incident, whatever that was called, where, like, all their teeth fell out, and then they all died. Like, 4,000 people died. <laughs> it's not funny. Uh, uh, just the way you it said happened. it. It happened. Just the way you said it. Okay, fair enough. All their teeth fell out, and they just all died. That's what... You know the incident with the teeth gun death? There, there were the, all the women, while the, while the men were at war... They had paintbrushes, which they painted on with like this. It wasn't necessarily like uranium paste, but it was. It had very high amounts of radiation in it. Oh. And they to to clean the paintbrush basically, or to like to get it a point, they put it in their mouth. But they didn't know back then because they're just like this chemical is perfectly safe for human consumption, and so they're just sitting there just like rubbing nuclear all over themselves. Mm, nuclear, by and until Italy. and nothing happened until one dude died. Four thousand women died, and then one dude died. And they're like, "Oh my god, we gotta stop this one guy." Mm-mm. Mm, bad. Mm. Yeah. God. So basically, that's that's what the forties were like. So, I I laugh. Hello, the war. Holocaust. Hound, Hound Doom. Um, the Pokemon and Homunculus. <laughs> Hound Doom. Yeah. I remember him in the forties. Yeah. What a spooky guy. Yeah. 
So they did a lot of uh, rocket engineering stuff. And a lot of their attempts to fire rockets failed. Yeah, which was unfortunate. Because I don't think he lived long enough to really get to the rocket age, you know? Rocket age. He really didn't. And then probably the FBI was like, maybe we shouldn't hire this dude to do rockets because he might just like enchant our rockets to be super rockets. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know, man, dude. I don't know. Those enchanting rockets would be it's really about projecting bad. your will onto the universe. Mega rocket will. No, I mean like it's basically using ritual to shape your reality. You know, like just thinking like if you understand that reality is malleable, you can actually use magic. Whatever. <laughs> you just can't call it that. That's Ma all it. Magic. Like you can call it like ritual, but just to, don't call it like magic. That's magic's been tainted. It's it has anyone been. can do magic. It's just the term magic. Exactly, it makes you think of stuff like wizard and then like yeah, casting. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Let me use my wand to astral project it's myself. It's more like a lot of like future. writing like, in journals and like. Today I experienced a devil. Yeah, be like I by four months ago I won. By to... four months ago, <laughs> by in four by, m by four months ago I had hoped to have been done, but I have been currently four months prior. Like what? <laughs> I messed up. Okay, I'm not yeah. perfect. Like I'm a big fan of like the boodle, B the boodle. <laughs> what the fuck is the boodle? <laughs> All right, we took a baby and a poodle, <laughs> and we have made the boodle. And it's disgusting to look at, but they're buying it like hotcakes over in China. The boo dies. <laughs> the boodle. <laughs> I pray to the sacred boodle. They got me good. <laughs> Buddha, the baby poodle boodle. The Buddha. Like, the Buddha stuff is, is, is pretty... The boodle. Like, yeah. You said it wrong. It's the, boodle. Yeah, the boodle stuff is pretty fun. <laughs> I want to be a boodle. Yeah. Like Buddha, like the the whole um, and it, like not rituals, but their their like meditations and stuff like that. It's pretty like down down to earth. Ritual press press perception. <laughs> I turned into Scooby prostitution. Yay! Yeah, yeah. That's flirty fishing. That's flirty fishing. Religious prostitution. I hope so. Um, what I was gonna say is, ritual plus perception equals boodle reality <laughs> that is the core magic belief that you need to know so well ritual plus perception or you could just sit there and pray for 45 hours and then turn into a that's god. why i like chaos magic because they're like chaos magic sorry we wrong hand pray. again pray do, do, do. i mean the buddha not really pray they're just like buddha you're a cool guy i want to be like you and then buddha goes i can't remember if that's Poof. the book of anton Levey or if that's chaos magic but they're like never pray praying is just asking someone else to do it take action don't be like can you do it just do it. I'm like, good belief system. Fair enough. I mean, but, uh, not to shit on your it. praying. But but stop praying. No, no you don't have to stop. No, at stop all. right now. Okay, all right. Stop. He's imposing beliefs on stop. you. Stop. Propaganda machine Nielsen is what they call me. You best not be breathing. Holadamore. Holadamore. Homunculus. Gotta, gotta Please just... Please quit. You just gotta... Hound doom. Throwing Hound holocausts doom. all over this room. Yeah, that's, that's very unfortunate. We're gonna go. Yeah, we gotta... So you can listen to us on SoundCloud, iTunes, and SoundCloud, SoundCloud, Sound iTunes, Sound Boodle, Google podcast. Boodle, I Doodle. Yeah. Uh, Instagram. And Snap, Facebook and... Facebook, Face Chat. And Twitter. That's where check you can us check us out on their social. You can also look at us on YouTube. Hello, everybody. You see me picking my nose right now. I am oh. picking into it. Yep, oh. sure are. Oh, boy, here But I if go. you like to just listen, then... You still got that. But yeah. if you like to la watch, la watch. If you like to la watch, you me. All right. And of bye. course, check out some more narratives coming up soon. Don't forget to yeah. subscribe and like and everything. Just like everything, guys. I'm moving out, John. Good night. Evening.